Hello everyone and welcome back! In this new lesson we are going to introduce a new NGRX key concept, the concept of action. We are going to build and dispatch our first NGRX action. So what is exactly an NGRX action? Well, an action is a plain JavaScript object that we send to the store in order to trigger some modification of the store state. So each action has a type which is a string. For example, this action here could simply be called the login action. Each action also contains a payload. So the payload of the action is any data that the store might need in order to create a new version of its internal state. In this case, the payload would be the user itself. So here we would uh, provide a property called user profile containing the user profile data that we have received here after the call to login. So there are multiple types of actions. An action can be, for example, a command that we send to the store. We explicitly tell the store to perform a certain operation. An action is more often an event reporting something that has happened at the level of the component and those are the two most typical types of actions. In every case, an action always has a type and usually it has a payload, although that's not mandatory. In any case, dispatching an action, it's the only way of modifying the store state. Now, what is the benefit of using this particular API based on the dispatching of action objects when compared to a more common API, such as, for example, a CRUD-like API, where we would have here at the level of the the store methods such as update, create or delete. Well, this creates a level of indirection. Here, by dispatching actions, we are not explicitly telling the store how to modify the data. We are either communicating to the store an event that we know that has happened here at the level of the component, or we are issuing an explicit command. But it's the store that is going to decide what to do with the action and how it's going to modify its internal state. The store might, for example, do an HTTP request to the server and fetch some extra information about the user and add it here to the user profile in order to build a more complete profile. The store might do several things with the action. This component, the login component that is dispatching the action, only knows about the content of the action, but it does not know what the store is going to do with the action. This level of indirection is important because this ensures that the login component is not going to get tightly coupled to other parts of the application. So it's important that the login component remains unaware of the course card list, of the course dialog and of the course screens. These are completely separate components that also interact with the store by dispatching actions to it. They only know about the store and the actions that they dispatch, but they are unaware of other components in the application. Now, we could create new actions just like I did here by explicitly creating here a plain JavaScript object. But we are going to show a better way of creating actions, which is more type safe. We want to make sure that if multiple login actions are being created throughout the application at different places, that they all share the same type of action type and payload. So in order to ensure that, we are going to add here to our authentication module a new file. We are going to add here a file that is going to contain all our authentication actions. Let's define then here a new file and we are going to call it off.actions.ts. Inside this file, we are going to create our first action, which is going to be the login action. So let's define here a new constant. We are going to call it login. And let's define here what looks like a new action by calling the create action ngrx method. So here we are going to specify a couple of arguments. Only the first one is mandatory, which is the action type. Now, as we did before here in the login component, we could define here a unique string, such as, for example, login action. Now, instead of doing this, we are going to define this action type string by following a very specific convention. So first, at the beginning of the action type, between square brackets, we are going to define here the source of the action in the application. So we are going to define here the place in the application where the action is getting dispatched. 
So this means that in general we should not be dispatching the same action in multiple different screens and components of our application. For example, this action should only be dispatched by the login page and by no other part of the application. So here between square brackets we simply put login page which is the source of this action. This is going to be very useful because later on we are going to have an action log and we would like to be able to identify just by looking at an action in our action log where that action is coming from. Now the second part of the action is going to be either the event or the command that the action corresponds to. So in this case this is an event that we are reporting to the store, we are informing the store that the user has logged in. Now after defining the mandatory action type we would also like to define in a type safe way the content of the payload of the action. So as we can see we have here an object that gets dispatched inside the action which contains here a property which is the user. And instead of user profile we could even call this property simply user and we would simplify here the definition of the payload by removing here the value of the object property. In all cases we want to define that the login action has a payload which is a plain JavaScript object containing one single property named user which is of type user which is the value returned here by the call to the login method. So here in our action definition we are going to add here a second argument which is a call to the utility function props from ngrx. So this function doesn't take any arguments but it does take here one generic parameter. So this generic parameter is the type of the payload associated to this action. So as we have seen the payload should be a plain JavaScript object containing one single property and nothing more called user which should be of type user. Now here is one important thing about this login constant that we have just defined. This is actually not the type definition for the user login action, instead this is what is known as an action creator. So login is not the definition of a class, it's actually a function that we need to call in order to create a new login action. Let's for example define here a new action and we are going to build it by calling here the login method. So here if we use the auto completion features of our IDE we are going to see that what we need to pass to this method that we have defined here is the user property. So as we can see login is actually a function, it's an action creation function that we need to call by passing in the optional payload of the action. Let's see how can we use this then in our login component. So here we want to inform the store that the user has logged in. So we are going to dispatch here to the store a new action and we are going to build the action object by calling the login action creator. So here inside it we need to pass in a new property called user. So as you can see this action that we are creating is type safe. We get auto completion here in the login component and we are going to fill in this with the user value. And with this we have just created and dispatched our first action, the login action. We can even further simplify here the definition of this new action by removing here the value of the user property. So this is a plain TypeScript feature whenever the value of a property has the same name of the property we can remove this duplication here from our code. But the result is the same. We are creating here an action of type login with this particular payload containing the user profile. So the store is now receiving the user profile. Let's now see this working in practice. We are going to switch over to a larger screen, we have reloaded the application and we are going to click on the login button. Let's keep an eye here on the store state and on the action log. So if I click here on login, we are going to see that I got here a new entry in this part of the screen which is the action log. And notice that we are getting logged here the 
action type. So if I click on this line, I'm going to select this particular action. If I click here on the action button, I'm going to get here the payload of the action. So as we can see, the type corresponds to the user login action and the payload corresponds to the user profile that we got back from our call to the backend. So if I switch here to our network tab and I select here the login request that we did to trigger the login, we are going to see that in the response to this request, we have received here the user profile, which is the data that we have available here in our action payload. So we can see that our action was dispatched correctly. But if we click here on the state button of the dev tools, we are going to see that even though we have dispatched the action correctly, the state of the store has not been affected. And this is normal because the dispatching of an action itself does not affect the store state. So an action is simply a plain JavaScript payload, either a command or an event that informs the store that something has occurred externally. But by itself, an action is not going to directly modify the store state. In order to modify the store state and save here the user profile under the off property, we need to tell the store how to handle the action. So that's what we're going to be doing in the next lesson. We are going to introduce another key NGRX concept, which is the notion of a reducer.